We are here to talk to you about the weather forecasting competition launched by uh, Meteonet on Kaggle. Uh, we're here on behalf of the MLDM2 students who participated to the competition and we've been supervised by Charlotte Laclau. So, why is weather forecasting a challenge? You may already know about Lorentz butterfly effect that states that for a small state in the initial condition, it can induce a large difference in the later states. Uh, that's actually a good example of the chaos theory. Um, and uh, that's why weather forecasting is so difficult. Uh, what we aim to do is to predict the daily rainfall at day D using only the data of the day D minus one. To do so, we have access to the collected data um, of the weather station in Brittany and uh, also of the 3D grid uh, made by the Arpege physical model uh, used by Meteo France. Um, so uh, our training data was collected during the year 2016 and 2017. Uh, but to avoid cheating, we don't have access to the date of the test data. This means that we couldn't use time series in order to do predictions. On the right, you can see that some of the that for some of the features of the weather stations, um, we have a lot of missing values, about 40% for some of them. And on the left, you can see that no, Brittany is not always raining uh, because the first quartile and the median are nearly zero. Um, so. Uh, how did we how did we merge the data to do to merge the data to be able to use a single um, bigger data set? Uh, we did project one data set on top of the other and did um, an interpolation. So we interpolated the map uh, to the to the weather stations. We actually used this um, a similar technique to fill in the gaps. Uh, we did a weighted average of a, of a two nearest neighbors in order to um, estimate the missing values. Now Thibault is going to talk to you about some um, about some approaches we tried. Thank you. Um, so as Richard said, um, this task is complicated. It's, compl it's a complicated problem. Uh, so we wonder if we could use several specific models to tackle it, and uh, those how to split the data to choose which uh, which model to apply on which data. To do so, uh, usually um, when we talk about weather, we think about season, but in our case, we were not sure uh, it was uh, adequate. So we try other approaches and uh, notably clustering. Uh, so we first created uh, one berry center per month, uh, which basically mean we create an average sample for each month. And then we apply a clustering method called k-means. Um, we, where, K, uh, where K is the number of expected clusters, and we use the silhouette score to evaluate the quality of clustering. The silhouette score is a common metric for this task. And we observed that uh, the uh, best um, uh, K value is three, so we need three clusters. Um, so after we wondered, are those clusters relevant? And um, on the left uh, figure, we observed a projection in two dimension of those berry center with uh, legends corresponding to each cluster. And we see that uh, it apparently makes sense to create those clusters. And on the right figure, we plotted the amount of rain with the amount on the x-axis and the number of days with this amount of rain on the y-axis. We observe that indeed each cluster have small differences, and the co and the corresponding uh, uh, the corresponding number of day two, uh, for example, cluster one have way much more precipitation than cluster two, and note that only uh, only the rain amount is plotted on this graph, but differences are also observed on all the features, which adding up together make uh, the cluster relevant. So now we will talk about uh, the prediction task. Uh, so uh, Richard also mentioned that uh, about 40% of the data in the cluster, at least in the training cluster, uh, is composed of non-raining day. Uh, so we can assume that on the test set, it will be the same. Uh, so we suggested to use uh, an approach in two steps. So first, we take the data and we do a binary classification to separate the non-raining day with the rainy day. 
And uh, we already know that uh, during the days without rain, we can put a zero in the prediction column. And then on the rainy days, we apply a regression uh, to compute the amount of rain, to predict the amount of rain uh, during these days. This day. And to do so, we uh, tried different approaches. So, regression methods such as uh, XGBoost using uh, decision trees or uh, polynomial regression, for example. But the best results were obtained using deep learning, both for bin binary classification and regression. Thank you for listening, and don't hesitate if you have any questions.